Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations and today we're going to be using this stamp set along with some other creativity and motion supplies to create this birthday party box which you could fill with all kinds of treats and the matching creativity and motion animated tag. When we pull the little tab that sentiment hello moves up and down. How fun is this? Today I'm going to show you how to use the Cricut to make the acetate box and how to use the Creativity in Motion products to make the tag. Let's take a look at everything that comes in your Creativity in Motion bundle. You get this wonderful set of instructions. There are four stamp sets here. I'm going to show you how to use each one of these throughout the month. We're using this top one today. You also get this lovely paper pack. These are six by six sheets full of fun, bright, adorable patterns and colors. You are also going to get all of these pull tab dies, some card bases and card envelopes, and these acetate sheets, which is a part of this great big bundle that is discounted during the month of September. So I'm going to show you how to use a couple of these products today, along with your Cricut, to create create an adorable little box. Before we get started, I do want to remind you to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future creativity and motion projects. All right, let's take a look at this project in Cricut Design Space. The box I'm using today comes from the Artiste collection, and here is the number in case you want to duplicate it. You just need to resize it to the size that you want. Now, the trickiest part for me was figuring out the material settings to cut through that acetate. It was a little bit thicker than most acetate. Let me tell you all the experiments I tried, and then I'll tell you what worked. I started out by searching for acetate, and I tried the acetate setting with more pressure. That did not cut all the way through. So I decided to try stencil material, because sometimes the point for stencil material is a little bit thicker. Again, I tried more pressure and it did not cut all the way through. So after doing a little bit of research, I looked into foil acetate. Again, I increased the pressure to more. I loaded the acetate onto my mat and pressed the go button. But instead of unloading it after it was finished cutting, I pressed the go button a second time so that it could run through its scoring and cutting again. By doing this, it actually cut through the acetate. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to look into a custom setting for this acetate and do a little bit more experimentation. After the Cricut cut out that acetate, I realized that the pressure wasn't quite enough to create some deep score lines. I'm almost wondering if I needed to use the double scoring wheel. So my solution to this problem was to grab my paper cutter and a bone folder and just create a deeper impression on each one of those score lines. The next time I create a project with this acetate that requires scoring, my plan is to try that double scoring wheel and see if it creates a better impression. I have everything cut out to create my box and tag. Here is that acetate box that I cut out, the two parts of the lid that were cut out of those six by six paper sheets, an extended tag that I cut using our tags and tabs thin cuts. As you can see, this is a little bit longer than the thin cut. I'm going to show you how to do that here in a minute. I have the pull tab insert created from the tab dies and this stitched rectangle frame that I cut out of some canary card cardstock. Let me show you how I created that lengthened tag from our tags and tabs thin cuts. Here I have my die cutting machine and a piece of white daisy cardstock. I'm going to place that tag die right on the top and sandwich it between the two plates. As I run this die through my die cutting machine, I'm going to stop before I get to the end cut of the tag. I don't want to cut all the way through that tag die. Now I'm going to rotate the white daisy cardstock and I'm going to place that tag thin cut farther down onto the partially cut image. You might need a little bit of post-it tape to hold this die in place. Once I've done that, I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine again, stopping before I get to the top of the tag. By doing two partial cuts with this tag thin cut, I've created an elongated tag, a little bit longer than the original tag thin cut. 
Now that you know how I cut everything out, let's go ahead and start assembling. I'm going to start by folding on each one of those score lines on that acetate box. Now remember, this was cut from that Creativity in Motion acetate. The acetate is to be used to help those stamped images look like they're moving, but I love the look of these black stripes and thought they would look cute used as an acetate box. Once all of those fold lines have been burnished really well, we're going to start assembling the top and the bottom of the box. This adorable yellow check came from that 6x6 paper pad, and I thought it fit perfectly with the birthday theme. Here I am just folding on each one of those Cricut created score lines. Once I have finished doing all of these folds, I'm going to adhere everything together using some score tape. To assemble these, you're going to add adhesive onto each one of those tabs, tuck it on the inside, then fold over the top tab. So I'm just going to use score tape so that the top and bottoms are adhered really well and don't come apart when items are placed inside the box. Once adhesive has been added to each one of those little tabs, you're going to connect it to the adjoining side to start forming your lid. When all of the little tabs are adhered into place, you're going to fold the top flaps down and glue them into place. I'm just grabbing some mono glue here, gluing each one of those top tabs down, and then I'm going to use my bone folder to make sure they're nice and flat against the inside of the box. You're going to repeat this same process with the other lid, adding adhesive to each one of the small tabs, folding each one of them over inside the box, then gluing the top flaps down to the inside and using your bone folder to make sure that they're nice and flat and adhered into place. I'm also going to use score tape on this acetate box. My score tape isn't quite wide enough to cover the whole tab, so I'm going to add two lines of score tape to make sure it's stuck tight. Once I have the score tape down, I'm going to fold over the tab and adhere it to the inside flap of the box. The two yellow lids go on the top and bottom of the box, and I'm wanting to adhere that bottom lid into place so that it doesn't fall out once I've filled the box with treats. So again, I've grabbed my score tape, I'm just placing it along the base of the box, and then I'll glue that bottom lid into place. I really want to make sure this base is secured into place so nothing falls out once it's filled up. All right, so now we have the box portion of this project all put together with that bottom and top lid cut out of that cute yellow checked paper. Let's go ahead and move on to that creativity in motion tag. I've decided to decorate the tag with another one of those 6x6 six six papers from that Creativity in Motion paper pack. I'm just tracing the tag and I'm going to cut it out with my paper trimmer and glue it in place on the front of the tag. The next step is to create that Creativity in Motion sentiment on this pull tab. I'm going to be using this Hello stamp from the Animated Sentiments stamp set. This is one of the stamp sets included in your bundle. Each one of these stamps has vertical lines that need to be perfectly straight when you stamp them. So here's a way to help you get them straight. Use your Versamat to line up those lines. So here I am placing that Hello stamp down on my Versamat and I'm making sure the lines are straight with the grid lines. Now I'm going to use this line on my block, line it up with one of the horizontal grid lines, and then when I place that block down onto my stamp, I know that it's perfectly straight on that block. Now when I go to use the intense black ink to stamp it on my pull tab, I know that this stamp is going to be stamped straight so that it lines up with the vertical lines on the acetate. The next step is to cut a piece of acetate to match the inside of the frame. Those lines need to be running vertically inside the frame, so they need to go up and down the same direction as the lines on your stamp. Once we've cut that piece of acetate, we can go ahead and adhere it onto the inside of our frame. You're going to want to make sure those lines stay nice and vertical and straight, so go ahead and use the size of your frame as a guide. Let's take a look at what happens when we combine the stamp with the acetate. We have an animation effect. Isn't that cool? Alright, so this pull tab is going to have to move behind the frame after it's been mounted to the tag with some foam tape. 
At this point, I realize that I need to trim a bit of that pull tab off so that it can slide behind that frame after I've added foam tape. I've grabbed my paper trimmer and I'm just going to trim a sliver off of each side of the pull tab. I also realized I needed a way to tell people they needed to pull on that pull tab. In the Creativity and Motion stamp bundle, there is this stamp that says pull, and I'm going to use some intense black ink to stamp the word pull at the top of the tab. After I stamped it, I did change my mind. I didn't like having a white tab, so I ended up trimming that white tab off. I cut two tabs out of patterned paper, again stamped that word pull onto them, and added them to the front and the back of this pull out insert. The next step is to add the frame onto the tag using some foam tape. It needs to be risen up off the base so that there's room for that pull tab to come in and out. I'm just adding some slivers of thick 3D foam tape around three sides of my frame. I am just using that pull tab insert as a guide so that I know where to put the foam tape. After I have added that tape to all three sides of the frame, I'm going to place it down onto the tag. You want to make sure you have a little bit of wiggle room between the tape and that tab insert so that it slides freely behind that acetate. Since this is going to be a birthday party treat, I have grabbed some of those party time stickers and I am just decorating the front of the box with some balloons, some gifts that have been stuck down with some 3D foam tape, and a fun little yellow star that I've stuck down with a circle of foam tape. I've also grabbed this little tag that says happy and I am sticking it down onto the top of the tag. So now it says happy hello. The last step is to add some white ribbon and yellow twine to the top of this tag. After threading the white ribbon through the hole, I just tied some twine around the top and frayed the edges. And now our birthday treats are complete. Check out this adorable acetate box with the yellow checkered lid. It's going to be so much fun to fill with treats or a sweet little gift. The tag itself is animated. We can pull on the pull tab. We can make that little sentiment go back and forth and look like it's moving right there on the front of the tab. Bright and cheerful and perfect for anyone celebrating a birthday. And this was so simple to make using those animated sentiment stamps that come in your Creativity in Motion bundle. Now, you can buy each one of the items separately, but of course we get a discount when we buy the bundle. And we want to be able to make all sorts of projects using Creativity in Motion, which gives us these animated stamped images. You can find links to each one of these in the description below. I want to thank you for joining me today as we created this interactive tag and matching birthday party favor box. I do plan on showing you more projects that I've created using these Creativity in Motion products in the upcoming weeks. So make sure to take a few minutes to hit that subscribe button and notification icon so that you're notified when those tutorials are added to my channel. If you enjoyed today's project and wish to see other projects like this one, you can click on the collection icon above. I hope you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.